Satisfied, Chapter 7. A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction, written and narrated by Little Old Cole, who is me. Hey. If you haven't seen the previous six chapters, yes, six chapters of this fan fiction, the links are in the description box below. I advise you go check those out before you check this out because you would be missing on a lot of the plot. So yeah. If you enjoyed this chapter, do not hesitate to smash that like button and comment for the algorithm. Subscribe to hit that bell for every single notification. And if you do not like the narration speed, if it is too fast or too slow for you, just feel free to adjust it to your preference. Now without further ado, please enjoy Satisfied Chapter 7. Adrian's fists clenched around the steering wheel as he watched from his parked position a little ways from the Dupanchang Bakery. His sleek black Benz was hidden by the shadows at the curb he sat in, but he could still see whatever was going on inside and just make out Tom's looming silhouette inside the bakery. Marinette had called Kagami and extended an invitation to her mother's winter solstice dinner a few days earlier. She had said both her and Adrian were invited, which made him wonder if she was deliberately avoiding speaking to him directly, or if by some weird development she was far more comfortable speaking with Kagami now. Done. Kagami screwed the cap of her dark lipstick back on, and she teased the ends of her bob in the mirror. After sitting a few minutes in the place that wasn't actually their destination, Kagami piped up about retouching her makeup. But that was where Adrian paused. Kagami almost never had to double take anything. She always ensured everything was perfect on the first try. And that was how he knew she just had to be doing that to buy him some more time. She most likely had picked up on his apprehension to enter the Dupanjang house. No home for the first time in forever and that that just made his heart swell he turned to look at his fiancee now prodding her face here and there with her fingers no doubt trying to appear busy hey he reached out to cup her face turning it to his smiling one i know what you're doing what me <gasps> Kagami's eyes widened as she looked around before pointing at herself with an adorable pout. <laughs> yes, you. Adrian chuckled. And you don't have to, you know? I'm bound to meet Tom and Sabine sooner or later anyway. They're catering for our wedding, remember? Kagami winced. Yeah, I remember just cringing on their behalf. But you just had to have them, didn't you? She shook her head. He knew it was a low blow asking Kagami to hire Tom and Sabine for their wedding, considering it was his marriage to someone who wasn't their daughter. But to be fair, everyone else knew Marinette and Adrian to be dating for only a few weeks before the incident. Their reveal came much after their several months of a lady noir relationship, so technically it couldn't be considered serious, right? Oh, who is he kidding? Their civilian relationship was so fueled by years of trust and longing that they wouldn't look like a couple of just a few weeks to outsiders. He was so certain about her. About them that it led to him getting that ring. Their relationship was the strongest, most precious pillar of support in his life. They had an unbreakable bond. Or so he thought. But he just didn't see anyone else fit for his wedding. Plus, he longed so dreadfully for Tom's delicious flaky croissants. He was probably going to get some tonight, though, anyway. Or not. 
depending on the cuisine for the occasion, he supposed. Hey. Kagami's warm hand on his cheek shook him out of his reverie. I know how hard this has got to be for you. And I'm comfortable. You may not have the same relationship you had with the two Penchangs now, but... You have me? She whispered, her thumb ghosting over his jaw in a way she knew comforted him. Think of this as closing everything on this old chapter and starting a new one. No more tension, awkwardness, just resolution and love and happiness and love. She bopped his nose and he chuckled. She held his face with her her other hand, and looked confidently into his eyes. Think of it as finally getting the closure you've needed all these years. Don't think I haven't noticed. She glanced down to break eye contact, but Adrian pulled her forward to meet her lips. He couldn't imagine how she must have felt watching him haunted by memories of that night, those memories that broke him and left mostly a shell of the ones full of life Adrian aggressed. Heck, he never even thought of her once while trapped in that endless world of torment for so many years. They broke apart, and Adrian watched as her eyes grew glossier. I just want you to be happy, Adrian. I know, with Marinette back and everything, things, things might, hey, hey, don't say that. Adrian cut her off, but she shook her head, furiously wiping at her eyes. No, no, I, I need you to hear this. <laughs> Darn, never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I'd cry. She let out a strangled laugh. But Adrian just stared at her concernedly. It wasn't often he saw Kagami raw like this. She was the support, not the beneficiary. But it wasn't the first time she had bared her heart to him either, and moments like this between them gave him more insight into his partner, and he cherished them greatly. Like I said, I want you to be happy, Adrian. Because God knows how happy you've made me. These past couple of years with you, they've been the best in my entire life. You made me feel and understand what love is, Adrian. And I know that love means knowing when to let go. What I'm saying is, even if it isn't me who can truly satisfy you and give you all the happiness in the entire universe, I'll... I'll understand. <laughs> I'll understand even if it means giving you up because, my gosh, Adrian, you deserve it. You deserve it more than anything. She paused to regain her pop composure, dabbing at her eyes this time with a neatly ironed handkerchief. She gave him a little smile. Anyway, so, uh, even as you go in there, whether Tom and Sabine take kindly to you, which I know they will, <laughs> or not, whatever happens, I will be right there. Just stop you from chickening out and bailing. Come on, you're the Adrian Agrest. They both chuckled before Adrian pulled her in for another kiss, conveying as much of his gratitude and love he could through it. I love you, he murmured against her lips. She grinned and wiped a stray tear from his cheek, then kissed him her answer. Then they walked towards the bakery, 
Adrian feeling like he could just take on the world. Why would you look who it is? Adrian, sweetheart, it's been too long. Adrian blushed as Tom's huge frame engulfed him as he lifted him from the ground, Sabine watching fondly from behind him. As bone-crushing as the hug was, Adrian reveled in its warmth, and he found himself fighting back tears from how much he'd missed this. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Dupin and Mrs. Dupin-Chang. How have you been? Now, dear, what did we tell you about undressing us in that manner? Tom and Sabine would do just fine. Sabine tutted, and Tom nodded vigorously beside her. Or has it been too long for you to remember that, son? Blush deepening impossibly, Adrian coughed and rubbed his nape. I, uh, well, <laughs> Happy holidays, Mr. Dupin and Miss Dupin Chang. It's wonderful to finally meet you in person. Adrian talks about you two a lot. Kagami came to the rescue, smiling and shaking hands politely with Marinette's parents. Is that right? It must be Kagami. It's good to meet you, too. You're the one Adrian's getting married to, right? Sabine nudged Tom, eyes whitening. But it was too late. Adrian could tell it wasn't his intention. But the tone that Tom's last words held spoke volumes, even though it is only a hint of hostility. They all fell silent, did Tom slip up. Kagami recovered first, and smiled coolly. Yes, yes I am. You must remember me from the call I made to book your catering services. Yes, of course. Sabine rushed to agree with her. And just then, Alia came down the stairs, looking all comfy in a gray sweater and jeans. Oh, you were right. Adrian's here. Nino came rushing down behind her, grinning with a dumpling in his hand and matching with Alia's outfit. Of course. Adrian muttered a quick prayer of thanks that he went for a casual but not so casual turtleneck sweater and a blazer instead of that dress shirt. Would have wanted to be the odd one out. <laughs> Dude, you must try these amazing Delish, and I cannot even comprehend. Oh, hey, Adrian and Kagami. Marinette tilted her head with a small smile as she leaned against the railing behind Nino, her dark hair falling to the side. Why don't you two go up and join the party? Sabine smiled. Adrian was yanked up by this, uh, was yanked up the stairs by Nino. Just as Kagami presented their small holiday gift to Sabine. It was a pleasant little affair, nothing too grand or peculiar. The only things hinting at the party being a winter solstice one being the lighted candles all around the room and the wreaths on the doors. Oh, and those to dive for dumplings Nino had raved about, of which he may or may not have begrudgingly slipped plague a piece or two. After a lively and satisfying dinner, everyone migrated to the living room to watch TV. Adrian stayed behind to help Marinette with the dishes. Uh, oh, Adrian, it's no matter. You don't have to. Marinette squeaked in surprise when he set the dishes down beside her. He took in a deep breath. He had to get over her. Completely. Poor Kagami. Okay. First step. Actually look at her, and not the food stains. He turned to her with a smile he hoped was easygoing enough, giving her outfit a once-over. Hey, we're matching, kind of. Marinette paused to look down at her own white turtleneck sweater dress as if she forgot she was wearing that. Then she turned red. Ugh, no, that wasn't what he was going for. Do something 
to save this. So I thought we might as well imagine dishwashing too. Cue the facepalm meme. Nice going, Agrest. You could just imagine Ply giving him a deadpan look and shaking his head in disappointment. Man, he really had lost his game. Marinette must have thought it was funny, though, because she let out a giggle and turned to continue washing, shaking her head. You're nervous too, huh? What was that? She glanced up at him through her side bangs for a second. I know what you're doing. Well, what you're trying to do. She held out her hand for him to pass her the next dirty plate. And I understand. After what I did. She faltered and shook her head. She looked over her shoulder to the living room before lowering her voice. I did it. <clears throat> I did it to end it all. Excepting to be Kagami's bridesmaid, I mean. You probably thought it was to get closer to you or something, but, but no, I realized, uh, to get over, uh, she fumbled for words, and Adrian put his hand on her shoulder. I figured. I decided to give you the benefit of the doubt. He gave her a warm smile, and she looked up at him, wide, shiny eyes and all. I, she began. She hesitated, as though she was asking herself why she was telling him this. It's hard, though. I mean, I know it's the right thing to do, but... You keep doubting if it really is. He finished for her, and her eyes widened even more. Darn it! Why did he have to go and finish it? Now she knew about his hesitation, too. Who knew if she would take advantage of that? No. No, Adrian. This is Marinette. This is... Marinette. This is... Marinette. The longer they stared into each other's eyes in silence, the more aware he was of just what Kagami had said to him earlier. Even if it isn't me... We can truly satisfy you. Oh, shoot. She was basically giving him permission to dump her. He had permission to choose Marinette over Kagami. He was suddenly hyper-aware of the proximity of their fingers on the sink. Adrian? Marinette breathed, and it would have gone unnoticed by him if his eyes would just stop flickering to her lips. I... Oh my... There's no way. He was cut off by their friends' exclamations at the TV. Then, one by one, every pair of eyes in the living room turned to him. They watched silently as he walked up to them to get a better view of the TV. Former supervillain Gabriel Agrest, a.k.a. Hawkmoth, escapes from prison, read the headlines. His blood ran cold. How did he even... came Alia's voice, but it seemed distant. Adrian could only hear the intense beating of his heart as his emotions morphed from fear and shock to hate and rage. Why would he even do such a silly thing? The world already hated him. He had a hard enough sentence, and now he was breaking out? How if it didn't shock Adrian, though? He knew his father still had money and connections. But who would manage all his affairs and plans while he was still behind bars? Where would he even go to hide from... Natalie? His eyes grew into saucers as he clenched his fist. Natalie... He whispered, and Marinette perked in the corner of his eye. 
He wasn't sure why, but he turned to her. I know where he is. Before everyone knew it, Adrian was flying down the stairs, vision red and out the door towards his car, leaving everyone else to scramble down after him. Wait! Adrian! Where are you going? He heard Marinette close behind him, panting. Where do you think? He growled and sat in the car, not having the time to entertain the pang of guilt he felt when Marinette flinched and stopped in her tracks. She quickly recovered, though, and let determination take over her features. I'm coming with you. She walked over and opened the door, sliding into the passenger seat. What? No! I said I'm coming with! She spoke through gritted teeth, and Adrian knew there was no stopping her. So, pumped with adrenaline and with his emotions all over the place, he sped off, ignoring the rest of the party that had chased after him, yelling for him to wait. What? Satisfied has seven chapters. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I definitely did not expect this many chapters for this story. Uh, I, I think I expected five um, at most. Yeah, or six. But seven, we're going to eight and probably nine. Spoiler, kind of. <laughs> but if you enjoyed it, please, please smash that like button and comment for the algorithm. If you do not know what to comment, just um, tell me what your take is on the new developments in the story, or just simply comment satisfied if you're not feeling up to that. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your subscriptions. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? smash that subscribe button and hit that bell for every single notification thank you so much guys for your support i will see you in chapter eight sorry for the delay for chapter seven <laughs> stay awesome